What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at the best budget cameras on the market. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, if you want a great photo and video experience without breaking the bank, I have you covered. For this list, I made sure to keep every camera as affordable as possible, but also that it was a great value for your money. And if you're someone that was initially looking to pick up a high-end professional camera, but you wanted to stay on a budget, these cameras are a great place to start. And I made sure to cover different needs for different users. So let's dive right in and find your perfect camera. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with cameras from entry level to high end professional gear, plus filmmaking techniques to take your work to the next level. So make sure to subscribe for all my future content and I'm leaving links down below to all the cameras that we talk about today. See you guys in the video. So the first camera on the list is the Canon EOS M100. And I think this has probably been one of the best values that's ever been on the camera market. This camera gives you top of the line camera specs at a very affordable price and still cuts very few corners. This camera has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is the same sensor that you see in a lot of Canon cameras and even their more expensive professional level cameras like the Canon 80D and the Canon M50. And one of my favorite things about the EOS M100 and actually all Canon cameras is the colors coming out of these cameras. They are almost perfect straight out of the camera. They require almost no editing and skin tones look amazing. Pretty much everybody looks attractive through a Canon camera. Photo wise, this camera does four frames per second in continuous autofocus, which isn't that far behind its competition that does five frames per second in continuous autofocus. But in single focus mode, this camera does six frames per second. This camera can pretty much handle anything you throw at it from vacation, family photos, portraits, fashion, lifestyle work. I just probably wouldn't use it to shoot anything with a lot of action like sports or dance. Video wise, this camera shoots 24, 30, and 60 frames per second at full HD. And that's really nice to see at this price point. Normally cameras at this price point do not shoot full HD at 60 frames per second. When it comes to video, you could probably shoot anything you wanted with this camera. 24 is a cinematic frame rate, so you could make beautiful cinematic work with this or just do daily vlogging. And 60 frames per second gives you a nice bit of slow motion, which you could probably use to shoot a little bit of sports and dance. Sadly, this camera does not have 4K. It'd be pretty surprising to get 4K at this price point. However, for 4K, there actually is the Canon M200. However, that camera does 4K at 23 and 30 frames per second, but it crops into your sensor at 1.6. So it dramatically zooms in all of your lenses. Personally, I don't think getting 4K for an extra $250 in a camera like this is really worth it unless you really, really plan to use the 4K. Personally, if I'm going to spend an extra $250 to get 4K, I'm probably gonna get something like the Canon M50 or the SL3. The autofocus in this camera is amazing because it has dual pixel autofocus. This focusing system is one of the best in the industry. It's fast and reliable and does wonders for both photos and video. It's really good at tracking both faces and objects. And when it comes to autofocus, you can literally set it and forget it. The kit lens that this camera comes with is actually pretty decent and most people will never need anything else. However, one of my favorite things about this camera is the fact that I can put an EF mount on it or a speed booster to use full frame photography lenses or just better lenses in general. It's really nice to have a camera that I can, in a sense, upgrade down the line. The design on this camera is absolutely fantastic. It's small, light, and compact, and really well built. The button layout on this camera is really minimal, and it's obvious that you're supposed to use this camera mostly in auto mode. Personally, I like to shoot mainly in manual, and I kind of wish there were a second dial for aperture settings, but overall, it's pretty decent. I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. The ergonomics on this camera are still pretty great, as they are on every Canon camera. However, this camera does not have a viewfinder. You have to do everything through the back LCD screen. However, that LCD screen is pretty decent and it's also a touch LCD screen. You can use that LCD screen to not only touch to focus, but also to change camera settings, which kind of makes up for the lack of camera buttons. And the battery in this camera is pretty decent. It'll last you four to five hours with sporadic use, but if you're planning on running this camera all day, I would definitely pick up a second battery. The only thing that I personally feel this camera lacks is an input jack for external audio, but the internal audio in this camera is pretty great. It's mainly meant to be used as a personal and vlogging camera. You can do a little bit of cinematic work with it, but in that case, the scratch audio is totally fine for syncing up with your high-end external audio. Overall, this camera's a really solid buy and gives you really high-end specs at a very affordable price point. This camera is probably the best way to not only get into the Canon ecosystem, but also get your first budget camera. 
However, chances are, if this is your first camera, you probably want something with a little bit more horsepower and you probably want it to look like a proper DSLR. In that case, I have you covered. If you guys wanna learn exactly how to get the best out of your camera and turn your passion into a profitable side hustle, we'll be coming out with a tech through the lens course that will do exactly that. Look out for the link in the description down below. The next camera on the list is the Nikon D3500. It not only gives you more horsepower, but it also looks like a proper DSLR. This camera also has a 24 megapixel sensor. However, what's special about this camera is that it does not have an IR filter, which actually gives you sharper images than a competing 24 megapixel sensor. Photo-wise, this camera does five frames per second. However, this camera has a really large raw buffer, which means you can actually take up to 100 JPEGs before this camera needs to take a break. But the one thing to note about Nikon cameras is that they have a really, really good raw codec. You can easily take the images from this camera and really, really push them in Photoshop and Lightroom and easily achieve professional level results with an entry-level camera like this. And video-wise, this camera does 24 and 60 frames per second, sadly no 4K. And both the video and photos coming out of this camera are extremely sharp and crisp. When it comes to autofocus, the autofocus for photos is phenomenal. It will never let you down. However, for videos, it's just kind of okay. It's not bad, but it's not amazing like the dual pixel autofocus. I would really recommend this camera to someone that's looking to do photos first with video being an afterthought. When it comes to design, it is one of my favorite aspects of this camera. It's small and compact, yet it's very solidly built and it really feels like a proper DSLR in your hands. This camera has a great button layout with fantastic ergonomics. It has all the shortcuts a photographer would want. And for someone that actually wants a professional level DSLR, this camera is actually a great fallback. The only thing that's missing from this camera is a flip out screen or an audio jack. However, that's not really a big deal because this is really a photographer's camera and those aren't things that a photographer would normally need. And one of the things that I absolutely love about this camera is that it has a built in guide mode that will not only teach you how to use this camera, but also how to take good photos. This is really a photographer's camera. If you're someone that wants to jump into photography at a budget price point, this is a great place to start. But what if you're someone that wants to make art, cinematic films, or you just want a camera with a ton of horsepower? The Sony a6000 would be a great fit. This camera also has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is pretty standard in the camera industry at this price point. However, what sets this camera apart is the fact that it has blazing fast autofocus, super fast shooting speed for photos, and a really good video codec so you can really push and pull your images when it comes to video. When it comes to photos, the A6000 does a whopping 10 frames per second in full continuous autofocus, which is pretty impressive at any price point. However, one thing to note about the Sony A6000 is that it only does 12-bit RAW, whereas the Nikon and the Canon both do 14-bit RAW. It may not seem like a lot, but it does make a difference, especially if you're doing serious photography. If you want to have 14-bit RAW in a Sony camera, you can easily upgrade to the A6500 or the A6100, but those cameras both come into about $800 before the lens. And at that price point, I wouldn't really consider them budget. The A6000 does full HD up to 60 frames per second. However, because it shoots in an XAVC codec, which I know sounds nerdy, but it's actually a really, really, really robust video codec. And you can do a lot with that image if you set up a flat profile and it gives you almost professional level video. You can really do a lot with the image in this camera, especially if you're going for a more cinematic look. And the autofocus in this camera is amazing. It's almost set it and forget it for both photos and video. I would argue that Sony and Canon are probably leading the industry when it comes to autofocus. And whether you go for dual pixel or a Sony camera, you will get great results. And design wise, it's an absolutely phenomenal camera. It's small, compact, and really well built. However, because there's so much horsepower in these cameras, the battery life is pretty abysmal. You will maybe get 40 minutes to an hour and a half on continuous shooting with these cameras, you absolutely have to have spare batteries. And this camera does have a flip out screen for high and low angle shots, but it would have been really nice to see a flip out screen that came out to the side so you could actually see yourself while recording. It's not the end of the world, but it would have been really nice to have on this camera. Sadly, the one thing missing from this camera besides a bigger battery is an audio jack for external audio. Personally, I think if it had a bigger battery and an audio jack, this honestly would have been a perfect camera. Keeping the lack of audio jack and small battery in mind, I still think this camera gives you a stunning image and a ton of horsepower on a budget. And the last camera on the list and probably the camera that I recommend to most content creators is the Canon SL2. This camera comes in at a really good price and gives you everything you would want as a content creator. This camera yet again has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. However, this camera has dual pixel autofocus plus digital stabilization built right in. 
Photo-wise, this camera does five frames per second in continuous autofocus, and for video, it does up to 60 frames per second in full HD. Sadly, this camera does not have 4K. For that, you need to upgrade to the Canon SL3. However, the Canon SL3 does not do full HD at 23 or 24 frames per second. It's really not usable for most cinematic filmmakers. However, if you're a content creator that mainly shoots at 30 frames per second, that camera should do you just fine, but I don't really think that camera's worth the 4K. And of course, this camera has the same great Canon color science where colors look perfect right out of the camera without any need for editing and skin tones look perfect. Everybody looks attractive through a Canon camera. And on top of that, it has dual pixel autofocus, which is superb for both photos and video. You can literally set it and forget it. This camera's a great fit for photographers, video creators, and vloggers. Basically what every content creator does. The Canon SL2 is a very well-rounded camera. And before you ask, yes, it does have an audio jack for external audio. In terms of design, it has a DSLR style body that feels great in your hands, yet it's still light and compact. Best of all, it has a side articulating screen for multiple viewing angles, but also being able to see yourself. And the layout and ergonomics in this camera are fantastic for both photographers and video creators. If you're a content creator or a hybrid shooter that does a little bit of photography, a little bit of video creation, and a whole lot of logging, this camera is the best deal that you can get at a budget price point. Because it's such a well-rounded camera and there's really no stark things that it's missing, except for the lack of 4K, I think this camera is pretty much perfect. This camera would be a great fit for a content creator or a hybrid shooter that does a little bit of video, a little bit of photography, and a little bit of logging. And if you're looking to do all of that on a budget without cutting too many corners, this camera is a great fit. Well guys, that's pretty much it for my top picks on the best budget camera. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you guys have any questions about these cameras whatsoever, or if you want help finding the right camera for you, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help. Last but not least, I'm leaving links down below to all of the cameras that we talked about today, so be sure to check that out. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for all the awesome content we have coming out this year. See you guys in the next video.